Uh, June 20th, 2014, Edible Acres, and here is a uh, new thing that's going on. It's a real wacky experiment that I'm playing with right now. My girlfriend and I want to make a cob rocket stove, um, like a cob oven, but one that's really efficient that we can cook on and do all that kind of stuff. And so I'm playing with different ideas for cores. And I thought I'd share some notes of what uh, what seems to be working really nicely. So this was made just the other day, mainly from clay, sand stuff from her yard, a whole bunch of vermiculite that I bought in, some straw and whatnot. But what's interesting about this, I mean, there's a million videos about rocket stoves. I mean, you can make it in a five gallon bucket as a form. Uh, this is a four inch diameter PVC pipe that was in the middle that we built it around. But I added another layer to this. I thought if I'm going to use make a rocket stove to cook stuff on top, so you could put some stones or rebar and then cook things on top, there's all that heat in the chimney that's not being utilized, just kind of cooking and then it's gone. And so what we did is I took a piece of copper tubing, I don't know if you can see it, but it I wrapped it around the PVC when we started and it loops around around 10, 15 times and then it comes out the top. And just for now, I have it going into a five gallon bucket. I made some penetrations just to see how that would do. My thought being, while the rocket stove is running, why not be always boiling water? So I could have a stainless steel container next to the rocket stove filled with water. Because ultimately when you're done cooking something, you want to wash dishes and it's nice to have hot water. So why not have it automatically? Um, I don't know if this is translating in the video, but well, you can see it. It's steam shooting off the top. It's actually really hot. It's not too far off from being boiling water already. It's been running for about uh, 10 minutes or so, 15 minutes. And this is a really inefficient system right now, but it's just an experiment. This is clayey water. Um, just uh, It's nice that it's clayey because then I can see the murkiness and see that jet. It's all just thermosiphoning, completely passive. There's no pump in there. So the cold water enters the bottom gets heated in the chimney and pushed up as it expands back into the container. More cold water comes in, etc. So just by the nature of running the fire, you can see the copper in there. There's also some metal fins that I jammed in to deflect the heat so the flame doesn't shoot straight up and it translates more heat into the copper tubing. So we get to cook on it and capture uh, boiling water or really hot water. Maybe a bigger one of these could be used to heat a hot tub. So you cook a dinner and as a byproduct you have a bathtub filled with hot water to enjoy after dinner or wash dishes, take a shower, etc. Um, just kind of like extracting more of that heat. I don't think it's actually robbing heat from what would be cooking because this is a really insulated container just reflecting it into the copper, scrubbing out some of the heat as it goes up. Um, and I can see each time I pump in some more sticks, the flames get higher. You can hear that sound. It's starting to boil more water in there. So it's coming out of the top of that tube at a near boil. I don't know if you can see that little jet of hot water coming out. Barely touchable. Pretty amazing how quick that happens. Now imagine if you did this on a larger scale where instead of a bucket, this attached to like a 275 gallon tank of water uh, in a greenhouse or in some space that you want to heat and maybe it also passes through a few hundred feet of PEX circuit in the ground so you're charging the ground with heat. It probably would need a pump at that point, a little DC pump that runs on a solar panel, but you'd be running this outside cooking a meal, doing whatever, and heating a greenhouse for a day or two, just as a byproduct of the heat that's coming up the chimney. So I thought that'd be a fun thing to share with people. I'm going to do a lot more experiments with this as part of a bigger process of doing a biochar 55-gallon metal drum producer that'll have a real long copper circuit, and uh, we'll talk about that in another video. Thanks for watching. Hope you're having fun with the stuff you're doing. Amazing how clean these things burn. It's like there's no fire. <laughs> but there's definitely a fire. It's very warm. So fun.